Okay, I want to do a super quick demo of some of the latest BoneScript functionality. Um, right here I've got a web browser pointing to a presentation that I did at uh, OSCON a couple weeks ago uh, on the BeagleBone. It's being served off of a web server out here on the BeagleBone itself. And um, there's a, a client library uh, that's used for this web page that uses Socket.io to send these uh, uh, Arduino-like functions um, back that are, that are part of the BoneScript library. Um, you can run these directly from the browser. Like here, I can click run and I turn the user 3 LED on. Uh, click run here, it runs this command and then turns the user 3 LED off. So it's really simple to use library now that you can directly code into your web pages, and that provides a lot of different uh, uh, interesting interactions. Um, I've also added this ability to go off and, and spawn loops onto the board. So here I can click um, run and it's going to take just a second. It's going to spawn this loop uh, that's blinking the LED uh, every toggling it every 100 milliseconds, setting it high and then setting it low um, using the familiar Arduino functions. Um, but I've just added this uh, function called add loop. Um, and I've also added a function to remove um, the loop here to, to stop it. Um, so we'll be looking at um, revising that a bit more, but you see here directly from the browser the ability to to go off and spawn these these tests. Um, but we're also able to use the the native JavaScript timers. Um, see here, I can really quickly um, just start you know issuing uh, these uh, digital write toggling uh, functions You're using the messages here just from the browser. So every hundred milliseconds, uh, here the browser is sending this message off uh, to the board to to toggle the state. Um, you see here the style is a little bit different when you do it this way, this non-blocking style. Uh, so you can't just uh, use these uh, delay functions. Um, and then here I've got a, a, a timeout function. So after, after 30 seconds, I'm just going to go ahead and, and turn that, uh, that function off. Right? So it's, it's going to stop doing that update. Um, now that's issuing the, the command from the, the browser every 100 milliseconds. So here we just offload the, the task entirely onto the BeagleBone. This is the a do eval function. I may end up renaming these functions, but you see there's the, the, the basic functionality here. Um, so I can spawn, um, you know, call this function and it gets a, a, a callback um, that I've just got a, a simple alert message tied to. And now this is, the browser is no longer sending these messages. This is uh, uh, using the interval function here running on the, the BeagleBone using Node.js. Uh, and after 30 seconds, it's going to call that callback function here, again the one passed um, to the doEval function so it can asynchronously notify the browser uh, that, this, that this task has ended. Um, so removing this uh, doEval demo function here, see even that timeout function ran on the board, it asynchronously notified me here in the browser. Um, I'm going to wire the, the board up here for some, some different uh, hardware interactions. Um, here's a, a really quick one. Um, so what I've done here is I've attached an interrupt handler uh, and used a jQuery here to, to go and dynamically update the web page. So if you hear if I remove the resistor, the update stop coming. Uh, if I put these resistor back in, see here the web page uh, starts updating again. Um, again, that's using uh, this attach interrupt function that's a very similar style to the uh, Arduino. Um, but here we've got a, a callback function that we've added. You see here's the, the call to attach interrupt. Um, you see this callback function um, that at times here does this uh, the do alert. That's what you saw there after the timeout it, uh, it issued this uh, do alert. Um, but this callback is able to just reg call regular jQuery functions or any other functions that you have to update the, the DOM in your browser to update the content. Um, so very easy to create uh, interactive web pages that um, respond um, to the to hardware inputs. And the, the BeagleBone isn't limited just to doing digital I.O. Um, we can uh, start functions here just doing uh, analog I.O. So we're here we're looking at the value of the, the analog input and setting a pulse width modulator uh, on the output. Um, stop that function. Uh, and, and we can of course just set the pulse width modulator to different values. Um, here just creating a uh, uh, a fade in, fade out, eff out effect on the, the LED um, using this code here. And um, the this analog write function does have additional arguments that I'm not providing here uh, that allow you to do things like uh, set the, the frequency uh, such that uh, you can control motors 
um, directly with these uh, these PWMs and these analog write functions. Um, so you can use that to control your robot. Um, of course, uh, we can also just use sliders um, and simply take in um, those asynchronous events. Here I'm using a jQuery function. Um, when the, the slider changes, I just set that pulse with modulator directly. Um, so it's very easy to control uh, hardware. Um, and I can also do that uh, on the input side here, right? So I've taken that, that same um, potentiometer here, adjusting the, the analog input. And every 100 milliseconds, I'm performing this analog read. Um, this will stop after 30 seconds. It'll go ahead and uh, halt that, uh, that, that uh, interval function. Um, but you see, I can turn it up and down, up and down. And when it's getting the call back, it's going to use this jQuery function. This is the, the jQuery function that it was using uh, to dynamically update the value um, on the web page. So very lots of different hardware you can use. Um, um, there's additional capabilities to, to look at the, the pin muxing dynamically and to set those. Um, there's a whole bunch of add-on boards for the, for the BeagleBone, and there's interactions within uh, the BoneScript library for... Um, for, for reading back status of the, the add-on boards, um, what pins they're using, reading their, their EEPROM values. Um, so here we can detect that we've got a weather cape attached. Um, so here's some, some simple code to, here in the, the, the browser, um, just using um, the same uh, presentation server, uh, to now to, to go and load a BMP085 driver um, on the I2C just using the standard Linux driver. I'm just issuing file writes and file reads and dynamically updating the content on a web page. Uh, this is using a processing JS here for this visualization. When I click run, it's going to run that code that you saw on the previous page um, to dynamically read in uh, the, the temperature and pressure values. And if you see here, if I put my finger on the, the, the temperature sensor, you'll see the, uh, the temperature change there. Um, so that's a, a, a real quick intro to, to the latest in BoneScript. Of course, you can get to all the, the code running on the board through the Cloud9 IDE. And um, I'll just show you that real quick. Here's the, the interactive uh, development environment uh, directly over the browser so I can get to the host code and, and edit all that, including, you know, here's the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the file that we're serving up. It's here in this... Uh, a bone 101 directory and the the oscon.html this is the the web page that I was serving up um, using uh, slidey to for the slide presentation and um, of course if you want if you have a beagle bone um, just change into the varlib cloud 9 directory and pull the latest code uh, you can go here uh, to, to github uh, to pull to, to look at the, the latest version online and to submit any bug reports um, thanks